Dr. Linden, you're on holiday in Goa, but uh, could you tell us something about your work in Australia and the UK? Well, the main work of interest is the research work I've been lucky enough to be involved with. And uh, there are two strands. One is I'm leading the team, which is part of an international trial on what they call the bionic eye. So for people who are totally blind, yeah. who have the disease retinitis pigmentosa or another inherited retinal condition, we've been able to try out a new artificial retina. This is an electronic chip-like device that sits inside the eye and is wirelessly connected to a pair of video glasses, which allows the people who wear them and have had them implanted to get some very rudimentary sight, which is, of course, a fantastically exciting moment in ophthalmology to take someone who's totally blind and give them some rudimentary sight. Now, the sight is not what you and I think of as sight, yeah. but nonetheless, for a scientist, or for an ophthalmologist, it's exciting to be part of that research project. This is in which institute? This is at Moorfields Eye Institute, which is at Moorfields Eye Hospital and the Institute of Ophthalmology, the latter being the research institute and the former being the eye hospital. In which part of the country? They're both in central London, adjacent to each other, I see. in uh, near what we call the city of London rather than the London the tourist part of London, okay. but it's in, it's in London proper. Okay. Uh, and it's an institute and a hospital which is devoted solely to eyes quite a large hospital, large institution, but only ophthalmology. Actually, Saligaon has another big ophthalmologist in Dr. Gama Pinto, like, you know, quite a time back. So do you see it as some kind of a happy coincidence that uh, you're another son of the village who is... Well, I'm happy if the village is happy that um, there's a connection. Uh, Gama Pinto is a giant figure in ophthalmology. I, I'm not quite sure that I'm in his league, yeah. but I've been lucky enough to be involved in that research project and uh, these are very prominent research projects because they're truly cutting-edge projects and therefore it's if it brings uh, good things to Saliga I'm more than happy. But for a layman like us you know I mean for whom ophthalmology is some big dark hole and we don't quite understand it how do you explain the relevance of for Gamma Pinto in, in ophthalmology in that sense? Well in the early days of ophthalmology and his period of work, as I understand, was more than a century ago. Um, these thing, these uh, fields were opening up, and although it feels now that you can pretty well research anything, the ability to do so was very difficult. The instruments available to examine the eye, the uh, patience one needs to go through is painstaking. What's admirable is people were able to achieve great things with very limited resources, very limited equipment, yeah. and starting with no really basic knowledge. But he was linked to places like Portugal and Germany, if I'm not mistaken. Heidelberg, I understand he was very prominent there, and ultimately in Portugal, because now the most famous institute in Port Portugal, in Lisbon, the Gama Pinta Institute, bears his name. But I think in those days, uh, these were very prominent institutes, and still are, and the fact that he worked there, became prominent there, and did uh, good research, as I understand, in glaucoma, though I'm not sure of his work. Yeah. Uh, these, are, these are great achievements, I think. But globally, I mean, which are the cutting-edge centers for research in ophthalmology today? Well, I have to say, not to say because it's my institute, but more yeah. fields yeah. because of its size and because it's the main institute in a big city like London is very yeah. good. Yeah. Um, in the United States, there are some very important institutes. The John Hopkins uh, Institute, which is an ophthalmology, both a research and a clinical in Baltimore. Um, the Jules Stein Institute in the, uh, the on, on the West Coast. Uh, in India, the All India Institute has a fantastic international name in, op in ophthalmology. Right. The Shankar Nathalayan in, uh, in Chennai as well. I what mean, do you make of places like Arvind Eye Hospital? And not so much for the quality of work and research, but just for lowering the cost of, you know, affordability of, say, your eye operations and things like that. Well, I'd, I'd have to say, not to say about its quality work, the, yeah. it's all around. I mean, Arvind is extremely famous, and uh, it's important that it's lowered the cost, but in fact it is now recognized as one of the premier institutions for its quality, and its delivery of service, and its teaching, and it's now become a major center of teaching where we will suggest to people to go to Arvind to I learn see. their cataract surgery, because I you see. get fantastic volume, I see. fantastic quality teaching, and you see very complex cases which you don't necessarily see routinely even in a city like London. So Aravind has uh, been a trailblazer 
to become a prominent international institution. And, and to be perfectly frank, at the AVO conference, which is the major international conference held once a year in Florida, 12,000 ophthalmologists from all over the world, they give one major prize every four years, and last year it was given to Aravind as the major contributing institution to international ophthalmology. And I think, you know, it's fantastic. At a personal note, how did you enter a field like ophthalmology? It's not something that everyone thinks of. Uh, actually, when you do medicine, it's, once again, yeah, you're right, it's not a foremost field. People think of general medicine, pediatrics, general surgery. But I want to do, do a surgery, one of the subspecialties of surgery, which is either plastic surgery, neurosurgery, ENT, and ophthalmology. And when I started, I had the opportunity to do a six-month rotation in each of these. So I tried these other surgical specialties, including ophthalmology, and I found it the most interesting. I felt people valued their eyes, and therefore you got very good response from, from doing your work. It was something where there was operations to do, such as cataract operations, where you could make a real difference to the people. And to a certain extent, people weren't necessarily always extremely sick. They were just uh, impaired in a way they valued, and you could do something for them. I found it very rewarding. I see. And yet there were still a lot of problems with blindness, many conditions which were untreatable. And therefore, I felt there was still a lot to contribute in research. So all in all, I felt it was rewarding and went into it. Very happy that I did. How does it feel to be on these list of prominent doctors and things like that? Ah, it's, it's fun. It's a novelty. But ultimately, the work is probably more stimulating than the reward of being on a list. And the reward you get from having done the research excites people. I mean, really although you get your name on a list or in a book or a newspaper or something like that, you get extremely good reward when people who work at the hospital, when maybe the catering staff, the nurses, they come to you and yeah. say, that's great, we're really interested to see that there's a bionic eye in London or that stem cells' has work has started in London. And I must say that's very rewarding that the people you work with at all different levels in the hospital are excited by your work, very rewarding. You're not even uh, midway through your career in that sense, in terms of age. So by the time you finish, what would you like to be known for or, or what would you like to have achieved? Well, I'd like to have contributed to the um, development, in this case, of the artificial retina, possibly have contributed to a further understanding of uh, a major retinal treatments. I think what we realize now is, unlike the big seminal changes like antibiotics, or it's very difficult now to make a single contribution where you treat. So I think much more you're conscious that you're lucky to be part of a big cutting edge movement. These days the cost and the complexity of the research means it's very difficult for you to do it yourself. Okay. And therefore to have contributed to one big area opening up and developing will be sufficient. I think the people I've taught, if they come back and go on to be good ophthalmologists, the people who have done PhDs under me who go on to be good researchers, these sorts of rewards are, are good in the long term. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank Thanks you. for your time also. Pleasure.